Hello everyone, my name is Ibrahim Youssef and thanks for tuning in to this presentation for ICRA 2020. I will be discussing our work to deploy a comprehensive bio-inspired control strategy onto a modular lamprey robot. The overarching goal of this work is to explore how insights from biology can be leveraged to the service of building better robots. At the same time, we wanted to put forward a tool that we hope to use in future studies geared at shedding light on certain aspects of biology. The use of event-based cameras has a number of benefits when it comes to real-time image capture in robotics, but no work has yet been done to study how these benefits may or may not translate into the context of underwater robotics. The EnviroBot platform that you can see here is an aquatic modular robot capable of locomotion using an angular-form swimming gait, characteristic of lamprey and other marine organisms. We implemented a neural network to direct this robot's response to visual stimuli and carried out a performance comparison between event-based and more traditional frame-based cameras. An event-based camera works according to a principle analogous to that of how retinal photoreceptors function in the eye. In contrast to frame-based cameras, where complete images are captured at a certain sampling frequency, event-based sensors provide an array of pixels which are sensitive to logarithmic changes in light intensity. The information generated by event-based cameras consists of a stream of asynchronous events, which means that a considerable amount of redundant information doesn't have to be sent. Each event consists of a package indicating the location of the pixel experiencing a light intensity change greater than some threshold, and the polarity of that change. We expected that by interfacing the neural network of the EnviroBot with this biologically inspired strategy for sensation, we would observe improvements in the accuracy of the robot's approach behavior. The network used for our controller is summarized in the figure to the right. The overall architecture consists of four stages. Sensation, pre-processing, a forward pass through the neural network, and finally, this output is used to drive a central pattern generator. Image capture was performed using both RGB frame-based cameras and the event-based alternative. Features were extracted from the visual data through a pre-processing step that was carried out for both types of camera. For the frame-based camera, a colored blob detection algorithm was run, allowing green blobs to be interpreted as prey and red blobs to be treated as predators. This involved estimating the size and position of each blob within the camera's fields of view. In contrast, a much simpler algorithm was used to pre-process event-based data. Blink detection was used to discriminate between prey and predators by assigning each type of stimulus a different flashing frequency. Estimating size and position of the stimuli was not needed for these cameras, as the pixels that were detected as flashing were used to directly stimulate the appropriate input neurons. At the lowest level of the neural network itself, the neurons were implemented according to the leaky integrate and fire model. The connection scheme depicted in this diagram is meant to direct the robot's actions in the face of various stimuli. The controller allows the robot to prioritize between multiple stimuli of the same type, while also resolving conflicts between stimuli that may compete to trigger different behaviors. For example, if shown a prey and a predator sitting in close proximity, the behavior arbitration subnetwork will resolve this conflict by directing the robot to escape. And we were quite happy to see that this control strategy performed as expected with the EnviroBot, aligning well with the results of simulations published in previous research. Here we can see the trajectories of four distinct scenarios recorded using an overhead tracking system. Each of these four experiments were left to run for 20 seconds or until a collision was made with either the target or the sides of the pool. When exposed to a solitary attractive stimulus, the EnviroBot swam towards the target. When presented with a single predator, the robot performed its escape behavior. The robot was able to successfully target the closer of two attractive stimuli, and when faced with the choice between attacking a nearby prey and escaping an immediate threat, the EnviroBot turned tail and fled. We also carried out a number of experiments with the robot in more dynamic scenarios. We presented to the system a prey that was constantly in motion and observed the robot give chase. We then exposed the robot to the constant presence of a predatory stimulus which caused the EnviroBot to consistently express its escape behavior. Finally, we conducted a scenario in which the robot was first made to select between two attractive stimuli when a sudden change forced the robot to readjust its course, escaping the predator and then making its way towards the risk-free prey. While only excerpts are shown here, the full video of these experiments has been made available for viewing. With a baseline in place for our controller using a pair of frame-based sensors, we then moved to investigate the performance of our system when driven by event-based cameras. We compared the differences brought about using the two different types of sensors, both computationally and in terms of the robot's performance. 
we were not surprised at all to find that the event-based cameras led to a significant increase in the number of passes per second through the neural network. For each type of sensor, the EnviroBot was exposed to no stimuli, a single stimulus, and two stimuli for 60 seconds each. Looking at the figure on the left, we can see that in general, our system was able to complete 10 times more passes through the neural network per second when the event-based cameras were used. Even more exciting was the observation that the event-based cameras seemed to enable a more accurate approach of target objects. The figure on the right shows the trajectories for two approach trials using both types of camera. What is obvious is that, in these two trials at least, use of the event-based camera resulted in a trajectory that led to a head-on collision with the target, while the frame-based camera produced a small amount of overshoot. To conduct a more rigorous comparison, we needed a metric to characterize how good or bad any given approach trial was. To do that, let's imagine a trial in which the EnviroBot traverses some arbitrary distance in pursuit of a fixed target. At every time point, let's record where the robot was by placing a dot at the position of its head module. Let's repeat that, but this time we'll also keep track of two quantities, the robot's distance to target at each time, and the angle formed by the robot's current position, its previous position, and the target itself, with the target being the vertex of this angle. Next, we will define the gaze angle, expressed on the bottom left, which is a measure of how off-center the target is at any given time. This quantity is normalized by multiplying the ratio of the current distance to target to the original distance to target, which keeps the gaze angle from blowing up as the robot gets nearer and nearer to its objective. In the ideal case, if all points of the robot's trajectory were completely collinear with the target, then this angle would be zero at all times. We can now look to the expression on the bottom right, a term we've coined the cumulative gaze misalignment. This score is defined as the magnitude of the integral of the gaze angle over a complete trial. Low scores represent trials in which the robot was able to, on average, keep the target dead ahead of itself. Higher scores indicate a proclivity for the target to be on one side or the other during the run. Plotting the gaze angles over the course of a trial can give us a better idea of why this metric is useful. This is done in the figure on the left for two separate trials. We can see that the curve generated using the event-based cameras, drawn in blue, eventually converges to oscillations about zero. This is because the EnviroBot was able to turn until the object was dead ahead of its trajectory. In contrast, the orange curve, produced using the frame-based cameras, never crosses zero. This represents the EnviroBot's failure to properly align its trajectory with the target during the trial. Ten such trials were conducted for each type of camera. The cumulative gaze misalignment score was computed for each trial, and the results were plotted in the figure on the right. It was quite exciting to see that the use of the event-based cameras yielded misalignment scores that were both lower on average and much less widely spread out than the frame-based alternative. While the results presented here are promising, there is still plenty of work that remains to be done. For one thing, the parameters of the neural network were tuned heuristically rather than algorithmically. We expect that an algorithm designed to identify the optimal network parameter values would lead to improvements in the system's performance. Also, though found here to be useful in overcoming issues associated with motion blur and low frame rates, a rigorous characterization of the event-based camera's performance underwater is lacking. An investigation comparing these cameras to other devices used in aquatic environments would be quite useful in gauging how suited these sensors may be to overcoming known limitations to underwater image capture. Looking forward, this platform could be leveraged for studies in a number of interesting avenues. For example, extending the neural network to provide the kind of localization and spatial mapping that most vertebrates enjoy, or enabling it to synthesize new connections in order to express behaviors to previously unknown stimuli, could not only improve the performance of such systems, but might also serve as an interesting tool for studying biological phenomena. In this work, a first use case was presented for event-based cameras in an underwater environment. The neural network used to control the robot proved quite compatible with the output of the event-based cameras. This resulted in minimal pre-processing compared to their frame-based counterparts and a significantly higher number of forward passes per second through the network. Conversely, the event-based cameras themselves interfaced very well with the lamprey-inspired robot design. By its very nature, the anguliform gait of the EnviroBot's swimming ensured that a constant stream of events was always being generated by these cameras. Finally, Use of these sensors was found to improve the performance of the EnviroBot's visually directed tracking behavior. 
Thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.